you're not defined by what you did to make money. You're defined by everything you do every day that nobody pays you to do. You do it because that's who you are. That's what you stand for. That's what will never be taken away from you. It's your quality, your integrity, and the things you actually care about. And you do them whether it's convenient or not, whether anybody thanks you or not. You do them because that's who you are. It's feeding your children. <laughs> it's educating whoever is in your life and being educated by them. It's everything for which there is no money. And money would trivialize what we're talking about. And for me, this non-cash economy is something that needs to be supported and learned and recognized, valued, because it's the only real value. The other economy that we're in the middle of, of course, collapses ostentatiously every three years. <laughs> like some giant, disgusting, dying dragon. And then is propped up all over again and keeps not functioning. Seriously not functioning. Meanwhile, the world continues because of the non-cash economy because every one of us who needs a break, there's someone we know who bails us out, who keeps us going through a difficult time, who says, okay, you can live upstairs. The only reason any of us are alive is because of that economy. That economy that's been there actually when we deeply need it. And of course, those moments of crisis are the power moments in our life, right? I mean, when I'm doing a production, and if the production doesn't go into deep crisis, I start to worry. <laughs> it's going to be a rather trivial production. <laughs> it's when the production goes into deep crisis, you say, okay, we're onto something. This is going to be something worth doing because we don't know what to do next. And we genuinely have to ask ourselves some very deep questions and come up with answers we didn't have before. And that's where the breakthrough is. There are, in many traditions, ways in which you practice giving. <laughs> So after a while, you can start being very, very, very good at giving. <laughs> because if you have no practice, it hurts. <laughs> and the more practice you have, it doesn't hurt every time. But just to say, I do believe the arts were invented as this practice in giving and practice in sharing. Practice in simultaneous perception as in cubism, understanding there are several points of view present simultaneously, recognizing what a dynamic in the room is, rather than top-down hierarchical thinking, beginning to understand how a dynamic moves. And in this case, what we're talking about in the 21st century, now that artists are making movies Musicians are painting. Everybody's doing something that's not their art form. Thank God. Creating radically shared spaces. So if I may just go to the next step. Rob mentioned it. I just want to mention to you I am founding at UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, a new institute called the Boethius Initiative. And I just want to describe to you a little bit of what I'm hoping the next stage for 
education is, but also how this works in public life. Because it's now time for universities to have serious roles in public life once again. Because if we leave truth-telling to the politicians and to the legislatures, that will be a problem. <laughs>